In fall 2023, I bought a new trailer replacing my pop-up trailer. And in this video, I just wanted to show you some of the upgrades I did around the solar and electrical system. This is just a teaser of what we're going to be looking at. But we started out with some solar panels. I put two 535 watt panels plus five 200 watt panels going on the roof. And I've got three additional 200 watt foldable panels that can go external. This was the space. It's underneath one of these beds, bunk beds, that I'm going to be putting it into. So I had to build out this subfloor. This is the original fitting to see how things are going to fit in there. And I was really concerned as I started putting parts in there. But ultimately, it turned out looking like this. So we got there. So first, we've got four batteries that we're using. These are 12-volt, 200-amp-hour batteries. And I put them in series to create a 24-volt array. This is our bus bar um, array that we're putting everything into, charge controllers, batteries, etc. And they're coming off into this inverter here. This is a 4,000 watt inverter, 24 volt, obviously. This is the switch. This allows me to switch between the inverter to power the trailer or shore power or nothing in the middle selection. So these are my charge controllers. These are some... Uh, 60 amp Renogy charge controllers for each of the strings that are running in series. Um, they all come into here. And I like the Renogy products so far. I've had quite a few. And this is Renogy software that you get to monitor the charge controllers with. We're looking at the 200 watt times 5 now. It's not really doing much. These are in parallel. But we'll soon look at the 535 watt panels times 2. Um, they're in communication with each other so they know not to conflict, um, but ultimately it does pretty well so far. So I mounted these in the bathroom. This is the shunt monitor and also the inverter shutoff, remote shutoff, so you don't have to open up that panel. So here we have a diagram that I put together before I started this project just to make sure that I had all my wiring gauging straight, uh, fuse sizing straight, how I'm going to be able to put things onto the roof. I should say how I'm going to be able to put the solar panels onto ro the roof. So let's let's start with the solar array. All right, as you can see here, these gray things here are things that exist already on the roof of the trailer that are unmovable. So I had to work around them. So that's why I chose the panel sizing that I did. So you can see we've got the two 535 watt panels here and they are in series and then we've got the five 200 watt panels that are also in series and all of these go into a junction box that's actually about right here it basically allows me to put in a waterproof box that then i can i routed the cables in through the middle of the wall between the bathroom and that bunk bed area so that they could come out into that area where the batteries and all the other components are at. Then I also have these three 200 watt panels. These are also some Renogy panels that I have that are foldable briefcase style panels. I was using them on my pop-up trailer and I'm potentially going to look into adding them in at some point, but it's probably a little bit down the road. I've already spent so much money that um, I just need to slow down a little bit as of right now and see what our needs are. So let's move to the electrical. And I should say, if, if this electrical diagram looks confusing, it would have been confusing to me too several years back, but ultimately it's been through, you know, friends and family that have worked on solar arrays that I've learned from them, watching a lot of YouTube videos that allows me to be able to understand what I'm looking at now. So when I created this, I wanted it to make sense so that as I'm tired working on the build, I don't forget wire gauging circuits, you know, stuff like that. And so anyways, let's look into the wiring real quick and I'll try to be as brief as possible. So we have our solar array here. And you can see we've got three different strings. This one is the one that is talking about that we're not really utilizing yet, but we have the uh, 200 watt panels in series that go into a fuse, into a dual pole breaker that's required, into a charge controller, into one of those Renogy 60 amp controllers. Same thing here. They're both in series, the 535 watt panels, 
and going into a 30 amp fuse into a dual pole breaker so that we can shut these. These are for shutting off the power. So if we need to stop sending power into the charge controller, that allows us to do that. You don't want to have just unregulated power going in in case you have to work on your batteries. You need to have some kind of shut off in order to make that work. And then lastly, this charge controller doesn't exist yet. I'm not sure when or where or how I'm going to put it in, but potentially at some point we're going to add that in. Now from our charge controllers, we have another series of breakers that are coming in that allows us to turn off power from the charge controllers. And then this all leads us to the bus bars here. So I use two sets of bus bars for each pole of the bus. So we have our load side that obviously is the the charging portion is coming from our charge controllers here and also that outputs to our inverter up here that ultimately powers the trailer but in between we're using a, another breaker so that we can turn off the load and charge separate from managing the battery system so we've got these two things being able to be separated through this breaker this 300 amp breaker and then similar on the negative side, the only difference is we obviously don't have a breaker here, but we have a shunt. So that's where my shunt, it's basically bridging these two together. And that allows us to produce the results of that monitor that we saw in the bathroom previously. This takes us over to the battery array. Like I said earlier, this is a 24 volt array that I'm taking a uh, two series basically and paralleling those two series together into this bus. And so I left myself some room here. That's why I got the bus bars that I did. So in case in the future I want to sacrifice that bed altogether, I could add two more series of two into this and still be within spec with all the wiring that I put in up to this point. So these are Power Queen batteries that I used. They are 200 amp, 12 volt batteries. And since we're running them in 24 volt, it works out to where they're basically 200 amp, 24 volt batteries together in the series. And we've got both of them. I did this for redundancy sake, call it the prepper and me. So if there's a situation to where I needed to shut down one of the series, at, like if we have a dead short or something like a battery fails for whatever reason, I could just turn off the breaker for one of the series and we could still have the system continue to work as is just obviously with a lower capacity and also with a lower ability to power the inverter. We would probably, re it would reduce to about a 2500 watt inverter at that point. So that takes us into there and then finally from, like I said before, off of this bus bar, we're going into our inverter setup. And so that inverter is powering the trailer here. And so I have this transfer switch that I talked about. And so both of these go into that transfer switch and I can switch between either shore power or the inverter itself. And those go directly into the breaker panel of the um, whole trailer system. And so that's ultimately how it was laid out. Um, that's what made sense to me. And I tried to stay within spec of, you know, what's expected for standards across all of these things and even exceed them where I could. A lot of these things I think are probably overkill. Uh, I probably didn't need two watt wire bridging these and also going into the inverter, but I just wanted to make sure that one, I had the highest efficiency that I could possibly get. And then two, I don't want to burn down my trailer for whatever reason, if there's a surge of power that goes beyond the spec of what that inverter can do. So anyways, that is the layout and I can provide this diagram if this is helpful to anybody. Perhaps I'll put it in a link below and you can check it out for yourself and see if it helps you in whatever projects that you're working on. Now, I would say this, this is the big disclaimer. I am by no means a professional. I am not responsible if you uh, burn down your house by using these things. Uh, this is what I came up with me and it worked for me. But ultimately, I would say consult an electrician if you don't know what you're doing. I hope this video was somewhat entertaining or helpful to you in any way, shape, or form. Thanks for staying the whole time. This is John, KG7AJM73.